run out of questions. That's always nice. It's always a little awkward when I ask all the questions and there's still like 15 minutes left on the show. And I'm like, well, <laughs> here we go. Uh, Thanks for all your one word responses. Now here we are. <laughs> audience, please. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, man, we were talking earlier before uh, the show started and, and I, I, I told you to put a pin in it so we could talk about it later. Um, I'm, I'm in a library now, man. It's, Heck it's yeah. crazy. So here's the thing. Uh, the the Alachua County Public Library has a very particular way of, you know, uh, accepting new books from authors. You got to fill out the application and send in you know, a copy and all that kind of stuff. And it goes through a committee. And mine was rejected. Uh, okay. And uh, on the grounds that I don't have a big enough like audience. I'm not I'm not mm. bringing in an audience of my own yet. Okay. And uh, and that's fair enough. But also, I'm a local author, and you're the local library. And I thought maybe you would want to support a local author. You know, like you can maybe help me get my audience. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was kind of bummed out about it, and I asked, you know, the the lady at the desk, the librarian, um, if there's like an appeal process, if there's some way that I could, you know, like try to get them to change their mind. And she's like, oh yeah, you can go through this appeal process at this place, and da, 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 da. Uh, but then she kind of made it understandable that it's unlikely they're going to change their minds you know yeah. like you're you're going to go through all of this and it's not going to achieve anything you're going to waste your time and you're going to be bummed out about it and i was like sure. fine so then I, as i walk away and i'm headed towards the uh kids section to pick up my kids uh felix please don't touch that buddy you're moving my camera and i'm doing a show <laughs> Shh, i'm doing a show i need you to go outside Bye, buddy. Bye. Love you. So gentle. Okay, okay yes. That's a nice hug. Okay, go. Get out of here. <laughs> um, so, as I'm going towards uh, the kids section to pick up my kids, I'm walking by one of those uh, directory computers. And it occurs to me, I'm a card-holding reader of this library. And when I search for a book in that directory and it's not there, I can click a button that says order it and I can enter in the ISBN number and they will order it. So I'm going to order my own damn book. So that's you what hacked, I did. I, hacked I hacked the system. System. I'm saying like you, you won't, you won't tell, you won't like accept me. I'm going to make my way in here. So I went, so I went in there and searched for my book. Obviously no results. Order it. Put in the ISBN number, genre, author, you know, title, et cetera, et cetera. And then I waited. It took a while. It took two, maybe even three months. I can't even remember how long it was. It was at least two months. Uh, but eventually I got that email. Hey, your copy of Shadow of the Spark is here. I went uh, down there. I, I gave them my card. They gave me the book and I handed it right back to them. I was like, put it on the shelf. That's my book. And it's in <laughs> your library now. And people can, and, and the librarians are excited for me. Like they're excited yeah. for the, the, like they're not the ones being evil and like rejecting. Uh -huh. That's some committee somewhere that never sees me, but the librarians are cool and they're excited. And then they put it on the, the sizzler rack. They're like, these oh. are the hot books. Everybody's looking for these hot books. So the, the eyes will be on. I'm like, yeah, man, like put it on there. I gave them a bunch of bookmarks. It's got my QR codes on them. I put the bookmarks yeah, yeah, up yeah. on the rack, just like, you know, I'm like, hey, they gave me information for like doing signings and stuff. Like I'm, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm in. Let's do this. The li dude, librarians are superhuman. They, they oh, have, they're the best. They can do. They know things. They know people. It's strange, you know, that people think the library, the public library, is kind of a a dying place. But if you go there, it's uh, it's always populated. I mean, if it's if it's in Gainesville, the 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 biggest like problem with the library is that because it's such a public space. The, the homeless go in there seeking shelter and warmth and that much is understandable but that's that's the big detractor from keeping people other people out of the library is like oh well i don't want to go down there and deal with that and i'm like hey man free books like, yeah yeah it's free books i don't know like i'm going to the library 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah yeah. So there you go, man. That's your little life hack. If you want to get your book into a library, just freaking order it as a reader, and they can't say no. <laughs> oh, that's that is. Uh, I'm I'm both proud of you and uh, happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. They ordered two. They ordered two copies. <laughs> you asked for one. They ordered two. So heck yeah, Ooh, worth it. Worth no, that's it. awesome.
I'll have to I'll have to see about that. You know, yeah, I've been I've been moving towards the oh, do I want to contact the the local library kind of situation? You know, like do I want to contact local bookstores? Like I'm I don't really feel like trying to make it through the Barnes and Noble red tape, but you know, all that stuff. Barnes and Noble incredibly hard to get into. You got to already have an audience. Books a million. Maybe less so, but I got rejected from them as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm on their website though. They'll, they'll sell my print books on the website, but they won't put me in the stores. Okay. Um. <clears throat> um so yeah, man, it's 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 hard because it's like they expect you to to have a, a huge audience. And I'm like, yeah, but how am I supposed to get it if you don't put my book in your stores? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. An end cap with a big, you know, red arrow that says <laughs> buy this. Yes. <laughs> like come on, man, you gotta help out. Out. new yeah. release. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you gotta help yeah. it out. I have been to a couple of local bookstores. Uh, I spoke to one who was very receptive, and she's very much into doing uh, events for local authors, signings, and, and things like that. But I went in there during it was September at the time, maybe, and and she's like, dude, this is my busiest month. Like, I I don't have time for anything right now. I, I you know I, I can't get into it. So I told her that I'd be back, but at least for the time being, I left her a copy of the book. She can check it out on her own time and all that. And she has a lot of local authors represented on her mm-hmm. on her shelves, and she's very picky about the the, the books that she sells in her in her uh, store. She's like the the cover has to be banging, dude. And I went in there and I looked through it. Every cover was a banger. I was like, yo, you do not have any ugly books in here. She's like, I reject ugly books, man. Like, they're not coming in here. <laughs> Don't touch a book by its cover. You yeah, have to. Yeah. It's you have age, to. Dude. That's marketing, there's, bro. There's millions of books published every day. Your cover's got to be popping. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I get, I get you know, I, I get uh, compliments on my cover, and I'm, I'm always like, God, that's the best money I ever spent. Like, every, every dime of that was well spent. <laughs> oh yeah no i mean your your world is so or like the station kind of concept is so unique that you had to you had to have a hand in it to get anything meaningful across for sure yeah yeah it's it's a it's a whole thing and you know in, in writing the sequel it's it's been a very interesting challenge because i kind of you know I did this to myself. Like I, I started this genre bender of a series, and now, like, I, you know, I, I have to follow through. And I'm like, man, like, are people going to be okay with this one not being like a straight up detective joint? Like, it's going to shift a little bit. It's going to be a little different. But yeah, yeah, I, I I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm. It's going to be interesting when I go from four to five. Mm. Well, four to new one you know i I was thinking of doing i'm considering still to this day doing something very similar with my series because i had originally planned this trilogy uh but now the world the universe that i've created is is big enough to hold more stories in it and so i was thinking about like how to keep the series going without like going back on my trilogy idea without like dragging it on too long and what I came up with was this other project that I had worked on for a long time before and never finished. And it was going to be a graphic novel. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm considering rolling it into this universe and this and making it some of the history of this universe. And so the next three books would actually be in some ways a prequel. But like yours, it's a huge time jump, different characters, different story. You know, connected by the world, but not connected by the plot. You know what I mean? See, that that's my thing. I, and I, I don't know if this is like a personal quirk or something. I just can't bring myself to... I don't like prequels. Is that weird? I, uh, like, I get that. I don't li- For the most part, I don't like prequels either. I get that. You know, I, I mean, it's like the whole uh, in the some movie came out that's supposed to be the prequel to Hunger Games or something this week, and I was just like, I have no interest. You know, like, yeah. What do I care? Yeah, you know, like, I I know what happened, and I find that to be the biggest problem. Yeah. You know, I I know what's going to happen, and and I mean, obviously, the best authors can tell you what's going to happen, and it still makes you emotional and whatever. But, mm-hmm. um. 
I don't know. I I want I I want to move forward. Uh, all of my books for a while are going to be sequential. Yeah. See, I, I uh, I'm with you, man. I, I'm not big on the whole prequel thing either. Uh, you, typically, with characters that existed in the original thing, you know, because as you say, you know what's going to happen. You know what happens to them. You know who survives, who dies. Like you already see where it goes. And more importantly, this was all supposed to be backstory to that story now you're making it the story like that's not yeah. gonna work it, it, it there's so much about prequels that can go horribly horribly wrong there are very very few that work for me i think better call saul is maybe one of the yeah. only examples that i can think of but even better call saul lost me at one point where i straight up stopped watching the show because of its prequel nature and it was in um it was in season three, I believe. Yeah, uh, Gus Fring is is on the show, uh, and obviously we know what happens with him in Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm. We know what happens mm -hmm. with Mike. We know that he and Mike work very closely together. Spoilers for Breaking Bad. Yeah. Uh, we know that they work very closely together in the future of Breaking Bad. So when they meet and they are antagonistic, there is a very like set number of things that you know they're going to say to each other and and because you know they're going to say it and you know who they are in the future you know how they're going to respond and that moment happens they're face to face with each other it's supposed to be this big monumentous epic moment and of course gus says exactly what i knew he was going to say and mike said exactly what i knew he was going to say and i felt so like oh, i'm bored yeah, I throw everything this sucks, and I, and I stopped watching it. And I, ha I had to go back and get back into Better Call Saul later. And it's the best thing I ever did because that show is incredible. Yeah, but but that's the prequel curse, that's the problem mm -hmm. with prequels. That's why I'm into this whole time jump thing. I understand, uh, you know, that that my my particular time jump goes into the past, so yes, it is technically a prequel, but it's its own. Yeah. story with a beginning middle and end and the only thing that ties it to the other one is the fact that it's in the same universe but otherwise they're completely separate stories that could be completely separate series if i wanted them to be and they could be they might still be this is just something i'm playing with but that's a great I way to like create that separation you know what i mean like there's yeah. no character that exists in both the, we're talking about like ten thousand years of separation like they're they're yeah. not yeah yeah and that mine's, and, and, mine's a thousand and it's Boom. You know, I'm not going to say no character exists. Ooh. Uh, spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm not going to say that either. <laughs> <laughs> now that you, you know, mention I mean, it. <laughs> you know, the, 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 I, it's, the, it's, the epilogue of one is establishes that someone's 5,000 in my, or probably 10,000 in my world so right on right on yeah i have i have a whole th i have a character uh her name is Faye, and in this first book at least she thinks that she's a witch uh she's she's a magic user with with lineage that matters and so she is very much more than a witch but okay. she thinks she's just a human witch and um and i i attempt something maybe too subtle nobody has nobody who's read it has has brought it up to me yet but i do i do a thing with her and i do it twice i do it once without bringing attention to it mm -hmm. and i do it a second time where i'm very obvious with it and the goal is to make you realize oh that's what was happening mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. but so far nobody has oh that's what <laughs> nobody has caught that so and when you catch that you get the answer of what she is. So the sure. reader can know what she is before she even knows what she is, because she's not going to fully understand what she is until book two. Sure. So, so in this book one, you, the reader, can put it together. Like, who is Jon Snow's mother? All the clues are yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and so I bring that up because what I do to pull all that off, the, the, the superpower thing that she does, the magical element thing that she does mm -hmm. in this action is something that could conceivably have such a character exist in both her time and the 10,000. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So 
So that's the only reason why I hesitate, because I might want to play with that. <laughs> I, I'll say that the the planning of seeds is like one of my favorite kinds oh, of writing. Yeah. It's just, oh, yeah. I love the, like I know, and this is, y'all can, you have no idea. N nobody has any idea. People can speculate all they like to, but a plot, there's a prop, plot relevant detail to book eight on the cover of book one and <laughs> and i've known that for forever. book eight whoa yes. hey, you, yeah 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 i've known certain details i've known certain climactic moments and the reason they fall out for years and years and i i, I mean in terms of like you know do you are, are you a big planner are you like a chart guy are you a you know so Excel it, spreadsheet kind of guy for your details. <laughs> in the in, in the world of like um, uh, plotters and pantsers, I'm probably closer to a plotter. Okay. But but I but I I live in the in between because I I like to outline pretty heavily. I do a lot okay. with like index cards and stuff like that in the early stages. Uh, <laughs> But, but when it comes time to like sit down and write, I have like a bullet point that tells me what I have to write in this chapter. Other than that, I'm I'm making up the chapter as I go along. So within the confines of that bullet point, I I can play around and and sure. allow my discovery writing to come up with with stuff. But so I, I so I need the structure, I need the confines. But then that allows me to be free and, and 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 creative within. So I'm a little bit of both. I'm a gardener. Sure. Like George Martin. Sure. <laughs> this is this is the sum total of all the planning for book four. Hold on. Let me get. Let me give you a full screener because I can't see that. Oh, whoa. Okay. So that's that's book four. You said. That's all of book four. That's it. Just one sheet of paper. And, it's, and another backs blank. Front that's, of, that's it's it. not even front or back <laughs> no 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 just front handwritten you know how you talked about like the bullet point for a chapter sure basically that's i okay that's all i write down basically is the bullet points as yeah, i go oh. i want to get to this plot point i want to get to this yeah. beat i want to get to this moment mm -hmm. and then i mean i'll tell you one of the most compelling moments in my in book one is a moment where i wrote myself into a crazy corner because i didn't plan and i love what happened um so there's so the characters go sequential one two three four one two three four right so one two three four happens one two three four happens and then i planned a two-year time jump you know like like progress the story progress the plot let's move forward um okay. and so i write one two three well four the, he was supposed to go home and resume his normal life for a little bit with other complications, right? But okay. his second chapter ended with him captured, being knocked unconscious by people who hate the magic in the world. And he was on a ship in the middle of the ocean with these people, and they found out what he was and they punched him out. And then I wrote a two-year time jump for everyone else, and I went, oh, wait. <laughs> how does he get knocked out on a ship, and then we go to a yeah. two-year time jump? Like, how do we how do we get there? So instead of going home and resuming his life, he ended, he woke up in a cage in the jungle um, two years later, unconscious the entire time, which is a... And what happened as a result of all of that was fantastic and led to the climax, which I would not have gotten to if I was a, a strict plotter. You know what I mean? Like I never would have had that yeah. moment if I didn't have the flexibility. Yeah, yeah. That's why I allow that, that flexibility as well, because, you know, I, I can go pretty detailed in my outlines, but you know, when it, like I said, when it comes to writing, I, I sum everything up into a bullet point and go with that. And, and that discovery writing will sometimes lead to a, a situation where I have to go back to the outline and and rewrite from there forward so that it'll continue to mesh well because I've just introduced something that changes everything you know yeah yeah um, yeah. yeah that that definitely definitely happens you know that that discovery writing is 
is pretty awesome. Um, but then I, I, my yeah. favorite thing is to then go, okay, where are the four play like I can foreshadow this in this moment and in this moment subtly so that like I know I didn't know this was going to happen originally, but I can now go set up that this was going to happen and make yeah. it, you know like make it feel like it was plotted. It's those two great quotes, uh, Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Terry Pratchett said, um, uh, the first draft, the process of writing the first draft is the process of telling yourself the story. Mm -hmm. So like, in other words, don't get too bogged down, man. Like just, just get to the end, like just tell yourself the story. And then Neil Gaiman goes, and then, uh, the act of writing the second draft is the process of making it look like you knew what you were doing all along. Yep. yep. So now that you've told yourself the story, now you can tell them the story in a way that makes it look like you knew it all along, even though you didn't, you were discovering it the whole time. So oh, yeah, yeah I, I, I absolutely uh, subscribe to that way of, of doing things. I, I tend to, um, to try to get as clean a first draft as possible so that uh so that i can really like get into the nitty gritty on that on that second draft edit yeah i'm i'm a high school english teacher so i uh i would imagine i and and what i've been shocked by is how much i miss despite being <laughs> you know my job in many ways to find uh grammar mistakes and stuff but just silly little things that your eyes don't see man you you have to get a second set of eyes on writing for right. it to become truly clean dude i kid you not the the second after i hit publish no. <laughs> I, I i swear to god i hit publish i clicked over the tab the page came up typo mother <laughs> Just yep. like right, yep. right there. It jumped out at me, and I was like, "Why didn't you jump out at me like that before?" Yep, yep. <laughs> you've been I, through I, an editor. You've, <laughs> I've been through a whole proofread on you, and still, ah, uh, it's so I, many I, words, dude. I'll be a broken record on this until the day I die. I always use this this example. The audience at home is gonna hate this because they've heard it a million times, but you haven't. Um, okay, so. Dude, I, I find typos in everything, right? And so, check it out. This is a very, very fancy copy of Neil Gaiman's American Gods. It's yep. it's one of my favorite books of all time. As mm -hmm. you can see, hardcover, very shiny metal. Like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. They put a lot uh, of production into that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. the, the pages themselves are like Bible pages. They're like translucent. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. Like thin, but with the metal edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Nice. Exactly nice. like that. Yes. It's a it's a gorgeous edition, okay? And obviously yep. not, not his first edition, not even his fifth. This has been gone through over and over many times. He is one of the greatest authors in our generation with access to the greatest editors of this generation and access to the money to pay them and still i find typos in here yeah yeah like so i know i know i know <laughs> uh, well that's uh, uh, trust me i know i published my first book and then i i you know i kind of i got a lot of sales in the first two days because i kind of pushed it out to all the people who like me um and <laughs> yeah. and then I had a fellow English teacher friend who was reading it, and then she just at the, this. I felt good about this at least. The first typo she found was on page sixty-two, and I was like, okay, at least the beginning. I'm not turning people off in chapter one. You know what I mean? Like it's it, it builds, and then just like twice a day, she would send me a picture with something circled, and and it ended up being like fourteen things over the course. Now fourteen out of 183,000 words in that first book like whatever ultimately but and luckily with the beauty of self-publishing I just fixed it and that anyone who orders the book now will never see that um but I to tell you the amount of self-flagellation and like <laughs> spiraling of like you idiot how could there be so many yeah. you know what I mean yeah. like come yeah. on 
Uh, dude, oh. same, that exact thing happened with me. My sister is my editor, and mm-hmm. so she read it when she did her edit. And then uh, after I published, then she bought a copy. She went through and she read it again. Uh, I had done a whole other like edit on it and a proofread after her. So, so she was reading it with fresh eyes again and texting me every single typo that she found every oh, single no. <laughs> and and <laughs> so but like you self-published i at least have the luxury that i can go back and i can so i have, have a list of all those typos i'm going to be doing like when i do the next edition of this thing i'll do mm-hmm. a fresh edit on it i'll put that up with a, a with a new set of typos oh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the typos are always when i edit when i go back and change something I don't, you know, you don't read the new thing you wrote again. That is so, yeah. oh God, it's so frustrating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, this copy was clean. And then yeah. I changed the detail. And then yeah. I didn't check the detail I changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'm definitely going to be fixing some of those up for the next one. And there's also a scene that uh, my book club uh, clashed with and it's certainly the read that they got on that scene is definitely not what I intended. I I'm not, I'm not nailing that scene. There's something wrong with it. I got to fix it. So I'm going to actually like go in and edit that, that scene and, and, and give it another pass and maybe a a little bit of a rewrite because I, 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 it needs to be more of what I wanted it to be. Yeah. No, (laughs) no. I had a, I didn't. I, I this happened in. in I'm gonna Native George Asian. Lucas this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna retcon this. Like, never mind. I'm just gonna uh, retcon it. <laughs> um, my, uh, I actually had a scene like that in in beta reading that I kind of argue with my beta readers. So I was like, that's that's not what's happening here, and they were like, ah, oh, that's, that's what feels thing. like is happening, and yeah. so yeah, I changed it. It's it's. And this was fantastic advice that I saw from God. What's his name? Ah, uh, one of a comedy writer that who's famous. He said, "If anyone who is your reader tells you it's wrong, it's it is wrong. Mm. But they have no idea how to fix it. Don't listen to their advice." Yeah, and yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I saw that too, and now I can't remember who said it. Bill Hader. Yes. Um, yes it was yeah, yeah yes yes that was great advice because it's true so readers yeah, don't know how to make it better but they know when it's wrong yeah exactly so listen to them when they tell you that it's wrong and then stop listening to them when they start telling you how to fix it figure out <laughs> exactly. how to fix it yourself. exactly but but if they tell you it's wrong it's wrong and and yeah. and yeah like i get it because like i you know i i was I'm not on screen with the book club. I'm I'm watching from the shadows. Like I'm watching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm watching them talk about my Dracula book and, watching them have dinner. Yeah, and and you know, and they clash up against that scene, and you know, the ladies in particular were like, "Yo, like this is not cool. This feels very much like you know, the a, the, 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 the guy. Yeah, like the guy yeah. writer trying to write a, a female character. Okay, and yeah, and they yeah. did not feel that way the whole rest of the novel. It's just this one sure. scene where they're like, that's what this feels like. And in this one scene, I'm like, that's the opposite of what I was going for. I was literally like trying to like show this like really strong moment for this for this for this female character and instead like it reads like a, like a douchebag would write a bad scene so i'm like okay i gotta yeah. fix that whole scene uh because it's 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 not that 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 the scene is bad or that i or that i'm or that i meant to write that it's that i'm not getting across what i'm trying to get across it can be written better i'm gonna i'm gonna fix it i don't know yeah it's yeah no no that, i mean this whole self-published it, author thing is <laughs> it's tricky (laughs) it is it is now i mean at the the same time you know i i kind of randomly i when i was in college i took creative writing classes uh as part of my english major just like kind of electives and i the teacher the professor of the class was kevin wilson who at the time had published one short story collection and was like kind of got some press for it but wasn't much 
Homeboy has like 10 New York Times bestsellers now. He has a movie starring Nicole Kidman and Jason Bateman. Like, he's like a big freaking deal, right? Yeah, and that. yeah, his first novel, he was writing it. And that's, that's the, what became the movie. Uh, his first novel, he was writing it while he was teaching us. And he was going through the traditional route. And he said, if I ever have to read this again, I'm, I'm going to run through a wall. Like I, I, if they send me another list of edits, I'm going to tell them I'm done. Right. Like, cause he, yeah. he was on like edition 14 where they would just come back with 50 new things to change. Mm. And, 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 and another guy, uh, said the same thing. Like I, they said they wanted this book and then they gave me a list of 212 things to change. And I was like, do you want this book or do you want something else you know what i mean that, yeah. that kind of uh situation so yeah. we unfortunately but fortunately are the masters of our creation so we get to make our own mistakes without someone telling us how to make new ones or fix questionable ones who knows so give and a take yeah for sure yeah man i uh i entered uh, my novel into the self-published science fiction contest. The Hugh Howey one? I don't know if it's a, the Hugh Howey. It's the third annual. Um, it's the okay. third time we're doing it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's the same thing. Um, but it's it's been a really, really wild ride, man, because like all the books are for this first phase are broken up into being a, a allocated to different reader reader groups right these judges groups yep and um i'm i didn't understand the process at first okay. and like each group has been announcing cuts you but, know like we, 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 yeah, yeah I, we, we read this book well i didn't understand that we were divided into groups i thought it was all so every time that they would announce cuts, I would be like, "Oh, I'm still, I'm still safe." Ugh. Like every time I was having this yeah, like, crazy, yeah. like, oh, "Oh, okay, I'm safe." And and then come to find out, like, no, man, like you're just in this one group, and they haven't updated at all. You have yep. no idea where you stand. And yeah. then it was like, you know, so it's been a roller coaster of emotions. And then they started, that group started finally posting their cuts and they've posted two rounds of cuts already and i and i'm still i'm still safe so i'm just like oh my god and and they're announcing quarter finally soon and i'm just like i'm like i'm a mess yeah. over here dude i'm a no, mess I, I i did the fantasy one um as well that there's one so mark lawrence does the fantasy one and i'm pretty sure hugh howie modeled his after mark lawrence the fantasy one's been around for nine years um and so i think cool. that uh, I believe it's Hugh Howie because he started out self-published. Did you read his stuff, Silo? Um, I think so. Those are Hugh Howie. Those are the crazy. name definitely rings a bell, Hugh Howie. Like I can. It's kind the of first see it one's on the called like Silo, and it's about these people who have lived for Silo. generations. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. Underground it's a show Silo. or something now, right? There's, it's about to be a show. Yeah, he started yeah. out as a self author, so he's kind of doing this to honor. So I did the same thing, so. and I will say. I I am very disappointed with the time given to my book after all of this. Yeah. Um, so I for for example, right? In the fa in the so, fantasy contest? Uh-huh, in the fantasy contest. I had a I had a blogger or whatever who was in control of our section and she was reading them all and like making cuts and whatever. And when it came time for mine, she like posted a little YouTube video and basically she i think she read 10 pages including skipping the prologue um i think she read 10 pages what took umbrage with the fact that one of the characters was described as overweight and then um like i i mean i don't somebody dies on like page 14 totally unreferenced to like clearly ignorant of the like they were like and there's this weird part where we go into this character's backstory and ultimately it's because i'm setting up that they're literally about to die so i want you to vaguely care before they die um but like 
Didn't even make it to the death. So I got 10 pages skipping the prologue and then a no. And that was just kind of disappointing because I thought this was, you know, an official yeah. freaking contest where yeah. I'm going to get a good look, right? Like at least like 20% of the book, you know, like some some kind of chunk before you that's just a, drop That's it. apparently a rule with our judges at the sci-fi contest is that they have to read at least 20% of the book before, that they, before they can uh, reject it. Well, I, at least I can. That did not happen, and, and then, and, and that's just for this whole first sure. round of cuts. And then on the next round with the quarterfinalists, I think starting there they have to read the entire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean I, that that was my. It was just my experience, but I was not. I was just like, man, I don't even feel bad getting cut. I feel bad that you didn't read it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this group, you signed on to read these. Yeah. Why didn't you read it? Um, so that was unfortunate, but yeah. I, I wish you all the luck, man. You know, it's, oh, dude. I, it's you, you know, gotta... it's a, it, it, it's a marketing thing. You know, I can slap a sticker on, on this thing and, you know, it, it's, it's, I don't know. I think it's a, it's a, it's a marketing thing more than anything else. You know, if, if I, if I'm, a, even if I'm a quarter finalist, like I got, I got bragging rights. Like, <laughs> Oh yeah, no, no, that's, that's serious business. No, I mean, I'm, and, and I'm I think. Go for the cloud. You, you gotta hope that your readers are the people who got assigned your book, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, it being a sci fi contest, you know, I, I what I'm doing is I'm I'm reading every review of that they post of every book that they cut. And I'm reading the ones that they have marked as safe for now, because they have a few that, that they've mm -hmm. done that too. But I'm reading the ones where they cut and i'm looking at their biggest complaints their biggest you know the things that they take off points like the ones that i see every time sure. and those things that they're looking for are the things that i feel very confident about in my book the dialogue the characters the you know their voices like the the the, the things that make you believe the book mm -hmm. That's what they're looking for, and I feel very confident in the way that I wrote these characters and their voices and, and the dialogue and all that stuff. So um, I'm, I don't know, like I'm, I'm feeling good about it. Like I don't want to get my hopes up. Like I'm expecting yeah. to be cut before the quarter five. I don't expect to make it to them. I think there's one more round of, of cuts in my group mm -hmm. before they officially announce the quarter finalists. So I don't know. I I just I just feel pretty good because I, like I'm I'm like. I, I got good dialogue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, think so, I, think, I think I can keep their attention, you know? <laughs> more more than makes me mad about getting cut in the writing, you know what made me really mad? Is they put some... They, they didn't put mine into the book cover contest. The same person that got to choose. To, I mean, I don't know. I, I, well, we're not like the same anybody. person that reject the book is. They, also they, the they would candidate. submit like two, and then each group submitted two for like book cover, and then the readers got to vote on which book cover was coolest. Right. Or they each reader group submitted three. It should really be two separate contests, right? It, it was. It was. It was. But mm -hmm. like, but that's the thing is that it was <sighs> the ones that were put in ahead of me. One of them, sure. The other two, I was like, what? <laughs> you know that that art you're claiming is better than my cover i just i can't imagine hey, what you're looking at you Artists know subjective. like you know some I people know, really know. Are, are really into stick figures i don't know what to tell you like, <laughs> who knows bro who knows? yeah it's you know um I, no i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> no, the, the writing contest kind of thing is such a anxiety ridden thing it is it not has, fun it, yes absolutely <laughs> not i don't, I don't even, know it's you know, kind of a rush uh, you know the the rush part is kind of fun you know like a roller coaster you know yeah it, except it, that most of that roller coaster is like dragging through mud for me i'm like oh my <laughs> god why am i waiting so long and this is like they're just gonna reject it why am i hopeful but i'm hopeful but why am i hopeful and and even in your logic I don't know about you, but even in my logic, I tend to bounce back and forth where like, not only am I like, oh, it's taking forever. This is, this is hell. But then I go, but wait a minute. 
I have my book is a big book. It takes a long time to read. Yeah. Maybe this bodes well. Maybe they haven't commented on it because they're still reading it, and that yeah. would be a great thing, you know. But then I'm like, oh, good night, buddy. You going to bed? No, you just came in here to to bother me during my show. Yeah, just a hug. Okay, hug you. Big hug. Squeeze. Big squeeze. Okay. All right. Go, buddy. Go with mama. Love you, bud. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good, man. I, I got a little. The wife is just taking care of her right now. Yeah. I'm on. Yeah. The, I'm on the the floor porch slash Florida room. So. It looks like a comfy space, man. It looks oh nice. yeah. Well, we just we just set it up, so we're we're excited about it for sure. Cool. Um. Yeah. No. It, it's writing things tricky. Yeah, and and it's and it's entering such an interesting place because it used to be the loneliest profession where you're just by yourself in front of a typewriter back in the day, and or now a computer and, and just typing away. Uh, but uh, but nowadays, you know, with the internet, there's all these writer communities, author communities. There's there's all these ways to stay in touch, to ask questions, to receive advice. It's it's it's. A fascinating time, man, to to do this thing that we do. Our you resources know, are limitless. I think about this all the time. How about those suckers didn't have many typos? How you writing on a typewriter? How those dudes not have thousands of typos? And I mean, I'm sure like, they did. I'm sure they had typos. But we see these. Yeah. I mean, you see the editions of the classics. Did somebody edit the classics, or are we? Say, I mean, or were yeah, they? Yeah. No, I think so. No, I think they get edited. I think they get edited. Post publication, maybe, maybe. Yeah, they got to it, right? Somebody's because... editing Faulkner and Hemingway. If they had a typo, <laughs> you know I, what I mean? Like, that's a I, it's a good question because I, I don't know. I'm only guessing. I'm only assuming that they have editors. But you're right. Maybe some some text is too sacred to touch. I don't know, man. The Bible has editors. Like, <laughs> oh, well, the Bible's been edited a million times. Yeah, uh, case, case yeah. in point. <laughs> true, true. Um, Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, but um, what yeah, are your this... inspirations? Out of curiosity, since you ask the questions a lot, I, I assume at some point in the video you've answered them, but. Very rarely do they get flipped on me, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, where where the inspiration for for this series came from? Yeah. Um, so this series is the result of many different uh, uh, courseless ideas that I've had over the years, where like. I have an, a clear idea of a character, but no story for them to live through. Or I have a clear idea for a world, but no characters to live in it, and etc. So, like different pieces of the puzzle that I, I, you know, I have different pieces of those puzzles for countless other worlds and countless other books that may or may never get written. Who knows? But this one was just a bunch that that just kind of finally the puzzle pieces came together. Um, there's a couple different like starting points to this thing. Ultimately, the the novel came about because I uh, I wrote this short story. Um, I wrote this short story because I had a pretty profound mushroom trip that uh, changed me as a person. That'll do uh, it. That'll do it. Yep. Yeah, and I needed to share that that trip with people, but I don't like writing about myself. So I had to give it to a fictional character, and I gave it to Miss Bella here. And uh, by the time I finished writing the short story, I realized, oh, this is the beginning of something much bigger. This is a murder mystery. These characters are, are dead at the end of this. Like, uh, who killed them? Like, this this is a whole novel. So then I just started writing the novel, um, you know, just from the ground up, built it out. And then, you know, halfway through the... the uh, uh, outlining i realized oh you know maybe this is more of a trilogy like it just kept growing <laughs> yeah. on me yeah um, yeah 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 so i i 
I've settled on a trilogy, but I do plan on putting out like little short story things like that in between uh, the big books. So it'll, it'll be more of a full series. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's where it came from is a crazy mushroom trip. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I, the whole like short things in and around, I, I think about sometimes, you know, the let's write a short story in the universe. Let's give light to a side character. Let's do all those kind of things. And I part of me wants to and part of me goes, why aren't you writing the main book? You know, like I, I'm struggling with that, right? I. I'm thinking maybe when I finish four, I'm struggling and this, with that. when this arc is done, these finished four, five is coming. It's a thousand years later. Maybe I release like a series of short stories that are um, leading like brief moments in the thousand years leading to it so that it's yeah. kind of not so jarring uh, to yeah. see this world in such a massively different light. Um, because like the, I, I really thought that it was interesting the question in the from the audience that was the hard versus soft magic kind of situation mm. the magic will be much harder then for reasons that are massive spoilers and no one knows so um, but the magic will be much harder then and so that it's going to be a very interesting shift from people who are used to this kind of these people who are doing what they can with their imagination, their creativity to, oh, this is studied. This is an art. We know what we're capable of. We know what you're capable of. Let's like, I can train you to do X, but ultimately, you know, like that kind of thing is going to be very yeah. different as we move yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting with those short stories in between, like you're talking about because on the one hand uh i for example I, I plan on having a time jump between book one and book two because even though it is a trilogy and it is a series i want anybody to randomly pick up book two and dive into it and be okay because even if you do that there's already a time jump so there's already a separation between that and what came before it it already stands on its own um, okay, and then obviously, <laughs> if you if you read the first one, obviously things will make a lot more sense. Uh, if you haven't, though, like it should still make sense as a story. You should still follow these characters on this adventure, and it should all still make sense. So that's part of the goal with the time jump too is is having enough of a separation between each novel, uh, so that that such a thing would be possible. But then. I'm going and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to write some short stories in between. Well, then that undoes yeah. the whole yeah. time jump thing because <laughs> yeah. yeah. now the stories in between, you know. Yep. So uh, I, I'm wrestling with that too, man. And, and and I'm using NaNoWriMo to write these five short stories. Uh, in the end, I'm, I might only get three done because I'm so far behind. But the goal was five short stories, 10,000 words each. 50,000 words, boom, nano. In November? In November. Calm down, guys. While, while changing my job to yeah, a no. whole new career that I've never done before, it's just, it was bad timing. I, 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 I just, I wanted to give it a try. Give uh, yourself the grace of, I mean, come <laughs> on, dude. If you're breaking a thousand words a day, this better be your full time job. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm saying. You know what like, I mean? Like, I, I can, I can justify a thousand words you know like 45 minutes to an hour and a half like i sit down i bang it out i don't care if it sucks and i'll come back and edit it later whatever mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, once mm -hmm. you get beyond that you're looking at like a three hour commitment what are we doing you know like yeah. if, if this, <laughs> this is kind of a lot if you're going beyond like a, roughly a thousand words and you know and I, I think that's that's the idea of like focusing it on just one month it's like you know it's it's a binge it's a you know let's go now it's you know pull all-nighters so i and that's probably <laughs> the only way that i'm going to make it to at, at least the three out of the five is is on on thanksgiving i'm going to be alone on thanksgiving my, my wife is taking the kids to her sisters in tampa for thanksgiving 
and uh, and I normally work Thanksgiving, but in this new job I don't. So I'm, I'm staying home and I'm writing all day long, and I'm just gonna bang out as many words as possible and get as much of this done on that day. Uh, one last hurrah before November's over. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's it's not the next novel. And I just want to get this done and over with so that I can start the next novel because I have been like messing with ideas and and plot outline stuff and just like just things on the peripheral. Like I haven't dove in yet, but I'm getting excited about it. I think I know what I'm doing with it. So I, I can't wait to dive in, man. You're you're yeah. four books in now. You're, you're working on the fifth or you're going to be I'm working, working on, on the fourth. fourth. I'm I am working on the fourth. 76,000 words into the fourth. Um, and I published the third in May, so I don't yeah. feel too bad about being 76,000. Let me ask November. you this. You, you're writing book four. Mm -hmm. You have written four books. You have become a better and better writer with each book. How do you feel about your book one? I am... I currently feel that I, I I haven't read it in a couple of years and I'm about to I'm about to, when four's first draft is finished I'm gonna read all four and make sure my biggest thing is I want to make sure I didn't drop any threads make mm. sure I didn't uh, the seeds that are planted for this arc need to be brought to fruition and yeah. I want to make sure I did that in terms of my writing, I know that one was a little weird because it was written in bits and pieces over a decade, right? Like it was written to be one character's perspective and then it became four. And then I had to adjust this and adjust that and try and like, I've changed as a human. I changed as a writer. It's and the so, first pancake, right? It's the one that you, you, yeah. you taught. <laughs> my problem with it is that it's currently my foot forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to yeah. buy and buy into one. And, and everybody says two and three are better. You know what I mean? But I don't really... I am so deliberate in the seats and all that kind of stuff that it feels weird to edit. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things. Well, here's, like, here's the thing. Everybody knows that your first novel is your worst. Everybody knows that. Every yeah. author knows it. Your first novel is your worst. And even if it's great, you, you could have a great first oh, yeah. novel. It will always be your worst because you're only going to get better. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's why they tell us not to make your first novel a part of a series. Your first novel should always be a standalone because you're going to want to be able to distance yourself from it. And then I didn't listen and you didn't listen and nobody ever listens and we make our first novel part of a series. And then you learn that books two, three, and onward are there to sell book one. Because if anyone picks up book two and goes, oh, this looks good. Oh, wait, there's a number two on this spot. Yeah, I gotta yeah. start at number one. And then they go back and they start at one and, and, and move on to two and three and four, etc. Somebody picks up number four. Oh, sh I gotta start at one. They go to one and they pick up two and three because they know they wanna read book four. That, that's how you sell them. Okay, cool. Uh, but your first book is your worst. <laughs> I know. That's well, that's, see, that's the thing, out. right? You know how you're talking about how you wanted to write it such that someone could pick up two and it would yeah. be kind of its own thing. Well, I am s excited to try to draw fresh readers with the second arc where there's a yeah. new book. You know, there's a new book, a new one. book one. Yeah. Needed series you can go back to, but there's a new book one that yeah. is very different to like will there be references to events that happened a thousand years ago absolutely will it cost you to have not encountered them no you'll just lose a little bit of the enjoyment of people who went oh you know those kind of moments um so yeah i'm super i, I honestly it's depressing i'm more excited to write five than i am to write four um Nobody saw that. Um, and <laughs> yeah, uh, and um, like so, I, and, and I'm not. And I think it's because I've finished the creative process of four, and now it's just writing. And I have so much creativity towards five. But like, I, and it's not that I don't want to write four; it's that I know what's going to happen in four. I'm done with four mentally. 
creatively. Unfortunately, I still have to write half of it, but... I kind of get that, but at the at, at the same time, like I've I've combated that with the whole uh, having vague structure and then just playing when I'm writing the chapters because when I start at chapter one and I keep going in order until I get to the end, like you know, it, yeah, yeah, totally linear that way, and uh, and even if the the chapters themselves might jump around a little bit in time, like I'm writing them in order mm. and. Uh, and you know, I've got multiple POV characters. They each have their own storyline. All the storylines have to merge at the end. You know, you know. So I'm doing all of that with like all this discovery writing, and then that allows me to still be interested when I'm writing chapter 35 versus when I'm writing chapter one. Like I'm still interested because I still don't know what's gonna happen. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think part of it's that it's the end of the series, so certain climactic yeah. moments happen, you know, like, they, I have to give everybody an end, satisfying or not, and yeah. so I know where they're going to end up, um, and I, I don't know, I mean, like, in the sense of, I, I'm, you know how you talk, you, you outline, you, you're pretty, like, intense about it, I spend... I, I drive to work in silence like a sociopath. Um, I don't listen to music. <laughs> I, I, I think in the shower. I think in the car. I think in the line in the grocery store. I extra over here. <laughs> occupies a lot of a lot of my you know mental space. So yeah, yeah. when it comes time to do it, when it and like I have these freaking awesome epiphanies it probably I, pours out of you yeah because you've just been yeah. you, you've been hard i know on i know it what it is i know what it is and sometimes it surprises me but this late in the game yeah yeah yeah, I know where yeah. well like you said it's the end of your series like you're you're all everything you're thinking about is wrap-ups and payoffs and stuff like you're yeah you're, you're getting closure on everything and you get it before everybody else does all your readers don't have it yet you know yeah. it's a very interesting place to be in uh, Lane, thank you so very much for joining me for these two shows today, man. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you. Um, I love talking to you, man. You're easy to talk to. You. I, I, I and other people in the industry would call you a content generator. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you for having me. It was, it's been a pleasure. You know, it's my first time doing anything like this. So, uh, uh, I, dude, I, I, I hope it was a carefree experience for you. They're not all going to be like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, Adrian, I like to I, give everybody the VIP treatment. I give everybody, you know, I roll out the red carpet for everybody. I always try to make it as easy for the the guests as possible. But not everybody does it like me. <laughs> oh no, it was. Yeah, you're running a tight ship, and I'm sure everybody who comes on here would appreciate it. Hey, dude, thank you. Uh, hey, uh, anything you want to pitch before you go? Anything you want people to know about? I, I'll give you the floor one last time. Uh, TheEternalDream.com. Check it out. It's a good time because the series is about to come to an end in 2024. Uh, come now. But also not because there's more coming. Also not. Come now before the new arc in 2025. Dude, that's the way to do it, man, because you get to start a whole new series you're free to, to, to go nuts with it. You're not tied down to any particular plot. Like you can do anything you want with this new series. And yet it's still the same world. Everybody who was there knows how it's going to work so they can dive into it. I think this is a great idea. I'm, I'm and into yet, it. yet there's a plot relevant detail on the cover of book one. So. <laughs> right. All the way to book eight. <gasps> oh. Damn it. I'm intrigued. All right. I'm intrigued. Yeah. All right, brother. Thank you so very much to everybody at home. Uh, like, comment, subscribe for your comment. I just wanted to know where does magic come from? You tell me. You know, we got some fantasy writers going up in here. Where does magic come from? Leave it in the comments down below. Oh